um, just turn on my camera and um, hopefully for today's event, you will have a very fruitful and knowledgeable session and we have many great agenda and content plan ahead for you. And I'm your host for today's event. I'm Serena from iChat. And while we're waiting for, I think, everybody to join and everyone's arrival, I'd like to just use a few minutes, uh, brief moments to just introduce on today's event, which is the future of retail and technology C online event, which today will be evolving around on the wave of seamless retail experience in the new consumer economy. So in the light of the post COVID times and the accelerated pace of digital information, the future is challenging for retail stores right now. So to stay competitive in the rapid pace of technological change and the evolution of consumer demands, brands must understand consumers' um, changing expectations. And of course, we want to learn how top brands from Southeast Asia are innovating their marketing strategies to grow and succeed in today's retail landscape. So just a quick rundown of today's highlights and what we'll be going through. So um, basically, we'll be sharing on the shopper's perspective, trends shaping the new consumer's economy, as well as conversational automation on how to design a personalized experience to win customers, whether online or in-store in the offline scene. And of course, we're also gonna be sharing on the technology infrastructure on how to meet the demands of shoppers with fulfillment solutions. So be the first to get the most updates on the latest transformation of the retail industry in Southeast Asia and hit trends and technologies from the best of the best, which our supporting partners, MRCA, Zebra Technologies, InfoDrive, Meta, will be sharing more for us later on. And just before we start on our first speaker session later, just a quick intro on iChat, which is today's event organizer. So iChat is a leading AI powered conversational experience platform designed to help brands automate business process and customer service, marketing and commerce via social messaging apps such as Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Google Business Message. So without further ado, let's welcome our speaker, Stan, the Secretary General from MRCA, Malaysia Retail Chain Association. He will be sharing on the topic on the impact of technology in retail challenges and strategies. And Stan has over 47 years combined experience in IT management, business management, but more specifically in retail. He has also helped retailers understand how disruptive technology impacts retail and data dynamics. So right now I will hand it over to Stan and I'll let Stan to share a bit more insights on that. Thank you, Serena. Very good morning to uh, all of you. Um, and once again, welcome. I'd like to thank uh, AI Chat for the opportunity. And I'd like to, uh, on behalf of MRC, welcome everybody. And of course, on behalf of INOS Asia, a company that I represent, also like to welcome all of you uh, to this morning's seminar. I think it's a very important start and a great introduction that Serena has brought to, to, the, to the table because I think it, it, it gets into uh, the, the DNA of an organization, or what happens specifically in retail. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be sharing about the retail trends on the next wave, the impact of technology, some of the strategies and some of the um, uh, challenges. But I guess in every uh, business, uh, if you want to do anything, you've got to first and foremost understand the pain points, uh, because without the pain points being identified, it is difficult to automate. So you, you cannot have a typical environment where bosses of organizations, specific in retail, would say, uh, "Let's let's uh, let's buy systems and let's automate system, uh, you know, automate the process, and let's automate this, automate that." But at the end of the day, there are challenges uh, because uh, if it's not done right, and how do we do right? 
perhaps I will share some of the uh, uh, strategies as I go along in my in my talk. So perhaps can I just have the slide? Yeah, this is called uh, Retail Trans the Next Wave. I think if you if you look at some of these uh, little boxes below, you probably can identify where you are in some of the areas of retail in that in the context. Uh, next, please. I think what uh, next slide, please. What what is important to note is the uh, the peak commerce. Why do I call it the peak commerce? Peak commerce actually means pandemic commerce. The pandemic over the two years has taught retailers a lot of things because it has it has actually disrupted the business. Uh, at the same time, it has created a lot of opportunities for all, small or big. Uh, it has given business opportunity to reboot, restart, realign, and rethink how they should now follow through because of the change in the landscape due to the pandemic, due to the rules and regulations that are placed. How do I still reach the customer? How do I still conduct a business that can make some sense? And how do I then maybe look at some multi-channel strategy? By the way, there's a big difference between multi-channel and omni-channel which I'll probably uh, mention towards the end of my, of my talk later on. And the question will be was whether you want to stay on full e-commerce or you want to stay on a hybrid model. And the important thing is that because suddenly there's a lockdown, suddenly you are, uh, you are uh, disrupted from going forward, uh, no access to things. A lot of the retailers suffer through what we call a sustainability uh, uh, a dilemma and also a business continuity uh, syndrome. They could not know where to start, what, what data to get, how to reach out to the customers, what to do, not to do. But I think in any event, no matter what you do at the end of the day, the customer journey is always important. How do we then put that into perspective? And of course, the ever-changing technology. One thing in the pandemic that did not stop was the movement of technology. Technology went far as it always would do. Next slide, please. Now, if you look at a typical uh, installation of an organization, this is what they will do. Typical, huh? this is typical. For example, in, in a business function, they will, the, the business people will think of a strategy. Uh, they will then maybe get a product developed or a process developed. Then they will go into the operation section. Then they will deliver to the customer. This is what happens in a typical environment. But if you look at the bottom of it, the typical IT of typical environment, you will get what, what I call is the iceberg effect. So many times people will see only the top, the scene effect. But a lot of people do not realize they don't know what the don't know factor comes in. So the unseen effect, which is underlying what we call under the carpet in some uh, uh, street language. So a lot of things goes beyond that. A lot of people are not aware. I hear sometimes people of business in 10, 15 years, they will tell me, oh, I've been here for 15 years. I didn't know this was happening. Oh, I didn't know that was going on. My goodness, it was just right under my nose. Have you heard about this? If you haven't, maybe I'm the only one that's, that's hearing this. But that has been the common approach in most standard IT business implementation. So the, I, IT, the, the iceberg effect is very, very true. This is why I say in today, in the business world, in retail particularly, technology is no longer the enabler. Technology is the business. Next slide, please. So please remember that statement, eh? technology is the business. Next slide. Let me look at some of the retail concerns. And I'm looking at the, at the ground level of some of the challenges that retailers face internally. Number one, visibility of the end-to-end -end business. Number two, I just mentioned earlier, the process misalignment. Three, management of the inventory. With all the systems, number of systems, many retailers still face today this, the balance of inventory. Number four, shrinkages. By the way, there's no time to go through but there are seven areas where sugar just happens in the business. But usually retailers will always allude to one area, which is privilege, which is not really the case. Four, there's always detection of frauds, lack of detection of frauds that goes on in the business, the reliability of the system and the dependency, and the vendor that you have on your team sometimes do not have the domain knowledge to transfer that to you, or at least the service level is not to the, to the level of your expectation. One of the very important part, I think in most realtors like is the data management, the reliability of the data, understanding the data and the mismatch of the data. There's also security concerns with what's going on in the world today. There's also lack of collecting data. You have many data points in your business. However, because of the deployment, because of the lack of technology deployment, you cannot and always not able to collect data at the right places and uh, touch points of the customer at the right places. What more? If you are going offline, online, your customers 
are visible. At the same time, they are virtual. So how do I track all that? Uh, those are important factors to consider. And last but not least, I think the two important things here is the people identity management. Sometimes people are not placed in the right place and people sometimes do things that they're not supposed to do in the business and make decisions. And unfortunately, sometimes the decisions are made on ill gathered data that does not provide business sense. Now, these are some of the internal uh, retail challenges. Huh? Let's go to the external. Next, please. Next slide. The external concerns are this. Number one, business is getting more complex, which is true. There's also the shifting demographics. Now, if, if you look at urbanization and, and ruralization that's coming on, now everybody and everyone is actually trying to get peace, uh, becoming a customer because of the space that's open in social media, space that's open in online. And of course, people are getting more and more uh, uh, complex these days. So the customers are creating demands. And because the customers are creating demands, there's a huge shifting in the demographics of the business landscape. Households are downsizing. They're not buying as much as they were buying. There's also the changes in social lifestyle and behavior. Now the customer has a choice. And also there are no more educated customers. No longer that the customers that you think will always follow you, will follow you, but today customers has that choice. And also there are many new retail formats that are driving customer behavior. New changes, new trends that are happening. For example, if the trend is orange today, why would you want to sell black or a blue if the trends are changing? So look at those patterns. But how do you know those patterns? You only can know those patterns if you have right data sets and data touch points that you have collected to understand that. Sometimes in an environment like this, because of the use of technology, the advent of technology, you can actually tailor made your offering to specific customers, one-to-one -one marketing. But in a typical environment, you're not able to do that. And in the same time, you're also able to foster greater relationships with your customers, for sure. That is the way to go move forward. And obviously, you must understand today that there's the new consumer versus the old consumer. The old consumer behavior is no longer as the new consumer today. Customers getting smart. They come to your store, they look at the price, they immediately go to the phone, they check on what's the next price, where do they sell cheap. So you must understand the customer behavior has changed. So therefore, the, to capture that, to make that happen, you definitely need the underlying technology to, to enable that, not to, to understand and to get the business going. One of the things we need to understand today is there's also borderless landscape. People no longer are tuned to one area, one community, or a state, or even nation. People go beyond borders to do business today and buy beyond borders from everywhere and anywhere and any time. And last but not least, I think one of the issues that we have today is the talent management that is required to run. So we may have the technology, we may have the strategy, we have the agility and the scalability. But if we do not have the talent pool to run that, to manage that, to maintain that, that we are also then creating gaps in our business. These are some of the concerns that we have. Next, please. Let me now go to one particular example that I gave you. This is a true story. This is an American company. They do a lot of hair products. I won't mention names. They were forced to delay a major launch because there was a technical glitch. And during the, during the delay, uh, similar offerings, other products came on. I, I'm going to give, give an example on drinks. If you remember many, many years ago when, when Perrier Water had an issue, there was a big issue with Perrier Water, the mineral water bottle. Suddenly, because of that issue, Avion, uh, uh, Volvi, all these other brands started to come on into the market. So when you have problems, competition will always get up immediately and come after you. So in the delay, there were rivals. They found out there was a technical design, but when they resolved it, it was too late to resolve the issue. And in the process for launching, they lost about a billion. Usually when that happens, two things happens in businesses. They will call the audit or specific a task force to go and find out why and what happened, why did we have losses, what created the losses, for example. In this particular company, the company actually has designed the solution 15 years ago. Unfortunately, the information was buried and forgotten and omitted. Why? Because the findings showed that there were victims of turnover. People come and go. So information was buried. Nobody knew about it, but actually they had the solution on hand. So with the advent of technology, with the advent of information at your fingertips, this is where technology will help companies to understand that some of these things are, you know, value things that means a lot to the organization must be kept, must be uh, be able to retrieve and must be able to access. 
No point having information in an organization when you are not able to retrieve, access, and make sense of it. And this is what the victim of that company many, many years ago. So therefore, of course, they have changed. They've come back. Again, I won't mention the name of this company. Now, Hamilton BC, the strategic leadership group said that the customer, the corporate value chain dealing with information at the right time, at the right place, and in the right need to use of it. In business, it's a new capital, but it is worthless unless it is successful, communicated, enhanced. How true. Next slide, please. Let me tell you what are the demands today. There, there are four things here that I need you to understand. Understanding and strategy, these are the two, but the middle two are important. If you have an opportunity, you must have talent to support that. If you have talent, you must have opportunity to support that. If you don't have this one or the other balancing, no matter what you do in your business, it will not work. Having said that, then you must have the understanding of the opportunity. You must also have the talent strategy, how you're gonna make that happen. Let's look at some of the demands today in the retail trends. By the way, if I do have an underlying technology that will support this, then I'm able to meet these demands. Let me run the list anyway. Number one, customer demands. And I said to you earlier, customer now creates the demand in your business. Two, there must also be a management insights in your business. What works, what doesn't work, what can be tested, what cannot be tested. You must also have multiple channels to understand the channel strategy so that you don't just blindly go into one of the channels, and I go one slide after I show you some of the different channels that retailers can take advantage of. Three, looking at a global and supply and a local supply chain. Sometimes you cannot just base on one area of your supply. You need to look at supply in a various area. Of course, currency effects, and today the US dollars has gone through the roof, and you should look at alternative to make sure that you sustain your business. And that's one way to always find the strategy. Three, I think the e-business omni-channel, and this is where I'm talking about now, I'm not talking about multi-channel, I'm talking about omni-channel, meaning that I do have an omni-channel, uh, multi-channel strategy, but I have an omni-channel system strategy to support the multi-channel. So there are two works hand in hand. Huh? I mentioned what F to C. This is a new trend created by two of some of the giants, uh, 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 e-commerce uh, companies. F to C means factory to consumer. So they're cutting away the middleman, meaning that directly from the factory goes straight to the consumer. This is becoming a big deal at the moment. So if you are in that space, explore that and exploit that. Understanding customer experience and journey. Many fail to know what the customer really wants in their business. Next is offline and online strategies. O to O, as, as many people like to use the term. How do you then offer your strategies? How do you then bring that to the customer? How do you make one product that will meet everybody's demand? Not possible but you need to then take it and make it in a such a way that you're able to do one-to-one -one marketing. And you need to have that background information to do that. Customer management, customer is never right, but the customer is always right as long as you manage the expectation. So customer management becomes key and how do you then engage with the customer? The engagement strategy has to also be right, but all that is dependency on what is in front of you, what is the system telling you or the data is telling you. Looking at the data dynamics in the landscape, how do you then put data in a business analytics mode? How do you put data in a predictive analytic mode? How do you then put data in the prescriptive data analytic mode so that you can make the rightful decision? And I also like to look at one thing I call just-in-time products offering. This is important because when you look at data and demand of customers' uh, journey, you can also fashion products, what we call a just-in-time uh, product offering to the customer. Next, please. So if you look at a typical business setup today, you will see uh, that you have manufacturing, distribution, retail, uh, in a fast moving consumer goods and hospitality, all that in part and parcel of a typical business uh, so-called. So how do you disrupt that? How do you use uh, the web today, 3.0, for example? How do you use uh, uh, technology, AI? How do you use big data? How do you use some of the metaverse that's coming in? How do you then use uh, blockchain in some areas? How do you then put that in, into perspective to, this, to exploit uh, this, uh, this area? In, in technology, of course, in manufacturing, you can use IR 4.4, for example, things like that. I'm just giving you a perspective. Next, please. How do I then, it's important because today, if you look at the consumer, the customer demands, and if you look at a multi-channel retailing, by the way, multi-channel, if you look at 
you can see it is store, it is kiosk, it is catalog, call center, web email, mobile. I'm using an old mobile picture deliberately because today, because of the urbanization and even in the rural area where the, uh, phones have been used, uh, when banks have now you know, extended that to what we call microfinancing. So phones have become very much a tool, even in the rural area. And therefore, because of that, social network has now expanded to that area. So therefore, uh, uh, mo mobility has also gone to that space, if you may, uh, if you if you like to know. Important to know, what does the consumer does today? The consumer buys what they want, when they want, wherever they want, from whatever device or touch point they can access your data and product. So if you're going in a multi-channel in this exercise, you must therefore have the omni-channel strategy to support the multi-channel to make sure that the systems are in place to understand the customer journey and the customer touch points. And therefore you are always aligned. So if the customer buying from the store has the same experience as the customers buying online, this is what retailers are trying to achieve. And you can only achieve that through the foundation of proper systems laying in your foothold and in your ecosystem. Next, please. And if you give an example of a data point, someone thinking, where's the data point and where are the touch points? This is a typical example of a double, I mean, a, a, a mall in an area. Uh, there's an escalator, there's shopping malls, there's various areas. So if you're looking at traffic flow, you're looking at points of a customer, where they congregate, what they buy, where they go, what their behavior is. This is what I'm talking about data points. This is what I'm talking about customer touch points. So if you're looking at some of those areas, then technology definitely is the way to go to understand and to ensure that you're able to manage this in, in a greater space. And if you are one of those, then this is certainly an eye opener for you. Next, please. Let's look at new technologies that you can take advantage of. Number one, of course, there's big data in, in, in business intelligence. By the way, not every retailer is ready for big data because some retailers tell me that they have actually big data in the business, I'm a bit concerned. If you're just using data and adding hard disk and the data is increasing, that is not big data. That is large or huge data. Big data simply means that you are actually taking data from your cameras, from your sound, from your video, from any other sources, the data coming in different formats, but coming into one bucket where big data technology takes over and makes that into a meaningful data for you to read and understand. And that's big data, okay? Obviously now with the internet of things, with all the uh, availability, there are so many devices you can place. Look at customer facial recognition, for example, customer behavior, or, and, and you know, uh, spending time, uh, the dwell time of the customers, you can all detect that in your business. Uh, artificial intelligence, AI conversational chatbot, I'm, I'm sure this is one of the subjects later we'll, you will hear more on the AI conversational chatbot. I think this is a great way, especially today when you have resource issues and you want to make consistency in your business, so AI conversation chatbot is the way to go forward. Uh, virtual reality, virtual stores and online stores are no longer strange to us, are strangers to us, to the business, but they are coming in a big way. And of course, I'm not talking about self-checkouts, though uh, just part and parcel of a customer convenience. Um, business and customer data touch points collection I mentioned earlier. So you must have devices, even using your cameras and your videos to interpret data. I think that's very, very important to do that service platforms for your staff, for your customer supply, so they can see at any point in time that you capture these three main areas. The three main pillars in your business are your staff, your customers, and your suppliers. Those are very important to you. Of course, cutting across inventory in all the three sp uh, space. And uh, enhance RFID, this is driving product efficiency. You've got to have RFIDs in some areas if you're going to manage products in a very efficient way. All right, there are technology that are coming up both passive and active in our RFIDs that you can actually deploy. I mentioned omnichannel earlier, online, offline, but please be very, very careful. It doesn't mean that if you go to online, you become millionaire overnight. That's not the way to do it. You have to really be clear that we are ready for that because there are issues. Being online and being offline have different challenges. It's a different animal altogether. So you need to tame it in a different way. Blockchain is big coming in. Some of the retailers are already using blockchain, especially when, they are, when the products are expensive, they want to use blockchain to kind of control that, making sure that that original, originality is always maintained. Of course, Metaverse is something that is new, it's coming, and I'm sure retailers are going to be using that in their customer space. Next, please. Now, if you look at, obviously, that's where you need to deploy test, uh, technology, disrupt it, use technology to do 
business beyond your own borders, your ecosystem, and enhance where you're going. But make sure you use the right technology in the right way. Sometimes technology does not solve problem. It creates more problem than you can handle. So be very, very careful. Engage in the right strategy. By the way, if you ever go into business or putting technology in your, in your, in your, in your organization, use it as a business project and not as an IT project. Coming using systems is actually a business project and not an IT project. IT is just one component of it. Next, please. Look at the customer value chain. If you want to have the wanted customer, there are four areas you need to look at, and this is only achievable if you can use technology. Number one, you look at the customer touch points. And from the touch points, you look at the customer senses and desires. And from them, you use social engineering to engage with the customers based on the customer needs, habits, and desires. And then, of course, with the social engineering, you have the right format to engage. And when you engage, then you go back to the touch points again. This cycle never changes in your ecosystem if you deploy in the right way. That's how you maintain and keep your customers always close to you. The customer has a choice, by the way, today. So this is very important. Next, please. Obviously, if you do want to go to omnichannel, ensure that your customer experience is the same no matter what device, no matter what responsive on the device that you give to your customers. They must feel the same that they can use because today, customer uses all kinds of devices. I forgot to tell you that there are 4.9 billion people on the earth that owns a toothbrush and there are 4.9 billion on, on, in the planet that owns at least one mobile phone. So you can imagine everybody has some form of device. All right, next please. Let me just tell you what the changes are before I end my slides. Let's look at the lack of control. In the old era, organization needs to control and monopolize everything, the age of control. That is no longer available today because in the new reality, in the new area of social engineering and all that's coming in, social media, everybody has an age of influence. Mouth, word of mouth, they say, customer can talk to another customer, tell you about how good your service and your products are. So that has changed. Next, please, very quickly. Megatrend 2, there are a few gatekeepers. In the old days, you have one to many because you can control it. In the new era, it is many to many because of the vast connectivity around the globally. You can just send one message and just about everybody gets it. So the only few gatekeepers remember that very, very this truth, Megatrend 2. Let's look at Megatrend 3, fragmentation. In the old Megatrend 3, please, in the old era, there are a few centralized channels. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide. In the old era, there are a few centralized channels. People get most of the information from a handful of news media control. Today, it is huge across the board. I can get my news from anywhere. I can get from any groups, from any area that I desire. And the customer has a choice as to which media I pick. Whether it's a fact or a friction, end of the day, that is yet to be seen, but the customer does get the information. So be very, very careful. The age has changed. So you need to be extremely aware of that. Next one, Megatrend 4. There is a new change. Used to be the old way, the old web era. We be pushed, we pushed. Today, there's a new reality. People spend more time on the interactive social media and the social media web is actually becoming informal, immersive and very emotive. So therefore be careful, there's a pull and push factor. Things have changed. So if you want to do business, understand these realities out there as well. So you want to make sure you maintain and have continuity in your business strategies. Next, please. Last but not least, the Megatrend 5 Junior Journalism. All error will be audit and predictable, which means that basically uh, it is very much kept between control. There is less leakages, if I may use the word uh, in bracket. Today, the, the new reality is very messy, very opinionated. Even though it is true, you can turn into a lie. Even if it's a lie, you can turn into a truth. I'm saying this in, in, in context here because information is flowing just about at the rate that you can never imagine. So be very careful in the new journalism, how you take advantage. I'm saying these things because if you want to go into digital marketing, you want to go into the, the web, you want to go into internet, you want to go all that. These are the facts that you need to understand. Make sure that part of your strategy builds in the correct messaging, correct moves, so they can move forward effectively. All right. On that note, I because of the time that is short, I just kept you very short. Uh, next, please. I'm now open to Q&A. I hope I've given you enough. Uh, in this, uh, you know, the 10, 20 minutes uh, for you to understand what I've just said. 
But do understand one thing in my closing remarks, I'd like to say this. Number one, technology is no longer the neighbor. Technology is the business. Two, understand that technology doesn't always solve problems, kids more problems than you handle, but do understand also that technology can be exploited to maximize, but do make sure that you understand your pain points before you address. I'm here, I want to go here, and I want to get there. That should be your roadmap before you deploy technology. Last but not least, have the right talent pool with you to move forward in your strategy. So, Serena, I'm now open to question Q&A. Otherwise, I end my talk on this one. Next slide, please. You can actually, my email address, you're more than welcome to write to me anytime. And once again, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank AI Chat for this, uh, for this great time this morning to share with you guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And I'm sure on behalf of MRC and on behalf of Ionos Asia, I'd like to say thank you and I hope you enjoyed the short session that I had with you this morning. Thank you very much. Serena, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. So uh, it was a very comprehensive sharing, so I'm sure uh, it's a very knowledgeable session for everyone on the technology challenges in retail, um, whether it's internally or externally, and also with the shift in customers' behaviors where we really want to meet where the customers are and where consumers are now everywhere in mobile, online, and off the offline scene as well. So thanks, Dan, for the great session. And um, we're opening for Q&A now. So if you all have any questions for Stan, which I'm sure Stan will be here and answer all your inquiries and questions. So do let us know and you can send your questions through the Q&A session um, in Zoom. So um, do let us know. You can just type in um, any open questions or um, curious so, about Stan or anything like that. So yes. do let us know. Yeah. Well, certainly maybe if I can just suggest is uh, I may not be able to read the question time, but if you do have a question, just read it out to me immediately, okay? On the chat so that I can then work with you on this uh, on this context. I can then address those uh, questions as they are raised up uh, by the audience. Yes, of course, of course. Um, okay, so right now, not seeing any questions yet. So, um, due to that, I, I, I did, I did have a feeling, I did have a feeling we have a very smart audience. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So we have a few questions coming in. So, um, one attendee mentioned that no questions so far, but it's a very insightful, um, sections shared by Stan. And um, we have another question coming from Ethan. So um, he has a question for you, Stan, which is, how do you see the retailer moving forward by exploiting the technology in Malaysia, especially with the weak internet connectivity? So um, what's your thoughts and what's your take on that? Yes, I think uh, that's a great question. Uh, mm -hmm. What you probably do, if you are a retailer who's, who come and says to me, if, for example, uh, based on that, let me, let me just give an analogy. If you say to me today, hey, don't, don't talk to me about technology. I've been here for 20 years. I've been running business. I've been profitable every year. I'm managing what I have. I don't need anything uh, around me. If you are the one that is thinking along those lines, you are in serious trouble because it's not about you doing a business the way you know it. Because with the advent of technology, with the advent of internet, and with the advent of connectivity, the technology can actually drive the business at a faster speed, at a faster rate, and you don't need maybe 10 or 15 processors to do one thing. Maybe with technology, you probably need two or three processors, and you will achieve the same. And of course, your cost of doing business becomes very different. Those are the factors that would typically override the, the, the current retailers thinking that I've been in business 20 years. Can I give a short example, uh, Shudan, if I can share with you? How many of you remember Kodak? Kodak was the world recognized brand. In fact, one of the most recognized brands in the world. Kodak was up to this level where they were thinking that nobody can touch them because of time, I don't have time to go through. Out of nowhere, another brand came and overtook Kodak because Kodak became very complacent. They said, ah, nobody can touch us. A brand out of nowhere called Fujifilm came over and took them. And Fujifilm all right Kodak's performance in the market cap. Okay, just to give you an idea. So while this was happening, another company created a disruption. Nowhere they were not in filmmaking. They don't make any 
uh, pictures and all that. But they said this. I'll tell you what the name of the company is. They came and told the public, listen, if you got all photographs, send it to us. We'll make a storybook for you. You got birthdays, give a photograph, we'll print on your mugs and on your on your plates and all that as a birthday gift. And that's been on. This company is was called Shutterfly. Shutterfly overtook Fujifilm, overtook Kodak, and they were never in the film business. Why? Because they used technology and disrupted the business. So here's my point. The point is, the learned view is never stay where you are, especially when technology is coming in in a big way. Learn and understand, but also learn your parameters, because if you don't understand your parameters, you cannot just put technology in. It will create more problems than you can, can handle. Understand where you want to be, where you want to go, what you must make change, and then adapt that and move forward. That way you'll be successful. I almost can guarantee you that. I've been through that, so I can tell you that it will be successful. I hope I answer your question. Yeah. So um, any more questions coming in? If not, um, we do welcome everyone to jo also join us in the virtual booths later. So if you have more questions that you want to connect with Stan, um, you can do so later. And um, if not, we're going to move along for our next um, speaker and session for now. So um, thank you, Stan, for, for today's sharing. And um, next off, we're going into the next um, session. So let us introduce our next partner, which is from Meta, um, which we have Felix Chang later to share on the topic for evolution of omnichannel to hybrid retail. So um, Felix uh, at Meta has um, basically in the past four years, um, he's very experienced in the business development and accelerating business growth through digital adoption and marketing. Basically grown and managed accounts of over a hundred million sales per year. And of course, Felix is specializing in retail and e-commerce in particularly, and he's the client partner at Meta now. So let's hand it over to um, Felix um, from Meta to share a little bit more insights on the evolution of omni-channel to hybrid retail now. So now hand it over to Felix.